Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for an amazing launch of Wild Ride with Steve-O. We're back for episode two. It was the last thing that we recorded before this whole shutdown went crazy. And my guest is clearly quite sick as we taped it. I think it's likely he's got the Rona. But hey, judge for yourself. He's an incredible stand-up comedian. His name is Bert Kreischer. He's a raging alcoholic and a very dear friend. Um, I really can't speak highly enough for how much fun we had doing this. And let's just get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the wild ride. You. Okay. I'm always impressed by your techno- technological know-how. <laughs> Do you realize that's not who we saw you as when we first met you? I thought about you the whole fucking plane flight. Hey, guys, on the podcast today is Burt Kreischer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought about you on the plane the whole fucking time. Which plane? My flight. My flight home. I flew today? in this morning, yeah. Dude, we got to talk about flying. Oh. Because, uh. dude, when you and I first met, yeah. we were talking about loyalty programs on airlines, and you said, dude... It's executive platinum is not the highest level of <laughs> frequent flyer, what do you call it, privilege. Yep. You, you said there's a secret higher level and you got to know about it. it. It's now become public. It's Yeah, I got, in trouble. I got in trouble for talking about it. Oh, yeah. They took it away from me at one point. As I mentioned on Rogan, yeah. For people who don't understand what we're talking about, we should say that with accumulation of frequent flyer miles, you get different levels of status. Mm -hmm. The first one being, I believe, gold. Then Silver, gold, platinum, executive platinum, and then that's where it ends, on American Airlines. Right, but they actually became public with, with this higher secret level, which is called concierge key. Yep. And dude, I can't get it. I don't know what the fuck. It's, it, it, you can't get it. You get, it's it's. First of all, it is based off of the amount of money you spend on that airline. Right. It's and not based on how much you fly. This drives me nuts because we now exclusively buy first class tickets because I travel with my service dog. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and my service dog is rather large, so I was sure that buying first class tickets for both me and my tour manager here mm-hmm. Scott that that would do the trick nope. I mean how much fucking <laughs> <laughs> how much fucking money do I need to spend and I'll it, tell you <laughs> I'll tell you exactly <laughs> okay how much twenty thousand dollars a month a month <laughs> that's holy how much you were shit. spending <laughs> Holy fuck. How the fuck do you Dude. even do that? And uh, I wanted... it's, it's, it's really reserved. It really is reserved for uh, for heads of business. So, like, say you're, uh, you run Coca-Cola. You go, you know what? We're moving all our business to American Airlines. And then they're like, wow. Okay, thank you. You know what? Let me take care of you. when you And, and then guys who fly internationally. Like, guys who... The concierge key... The concierge keys really are... And celebrities. They give it to celebrities, but it's... It's it's a weird like I talked about it on Rogan. This is how fucking elite the status is. There's a separate entrance at LAX that you go into. Right. Someone then takes your bags and then walks you up, not just to the front of the TSA line. They because they they skip everyone that's in TSA. Everyone's in first class. They walk you in front of them. Then they walk you in front of all the people that are already through that lined up to get their bags on the conveyor belt. They walk you to the front of the conveyor belt. So wait, are you saying that you don't have to go through TSA at all? You go through TSA, but they walk you, they walk you to the very front of the conveyor belt where you put your stuff down. Oh, they right, put right, your right. stuff down for you and then send you through. A guy named Tony, shout out to Tony. <laughs> Tony's a gangster, man. Tony came to see me do stand up at the uh, at the store one time. This is my favorite thing that's ever happened. Tony walks me to the front of the line. Right, um, it's early morning. I'm hungover. I feel like shit. And I, he walks me in front of everyone at TSA, and there's like 20 people. And this woman goes, excuse me, excuse me, where do you guys think you're going? And he goes, I'm getting him through the front of the line. She goes, yeah, there's a line. And he goes, well, he flies a lot. And she goes, um, I'm executive platinum. I fly a lot. And he goes, he flies so much I know his name. And then he looks at her and he goes, do I know your name? And she goes, no. And he goes, that's how much he flies. Oh, shit, <laughs> Fucking man. shout out to Tony. <laughs> So many people have, have eyeballed me going like, and it sucks. I just lost concierge key the, uh, like two two weeks ago. You lost it? Because I stopped flying because I got a tour bus. Right. And, but I... I'll tell you what, man. I had a good run. <laughs> I had a good run. The shit they did for me was insane. The, the privilege that you'd get, the things that you get were in fucking sane. Like, I mean, always you get an SUV would always meet you. When you had to go to that, that like, 
the J gate where you'd have to take the bus to yeah, SUV every time. You, to didn't even have, you don't have to take the bus out there. Oh, I haven't ridden on a bus. In <laughs> oh, dude, SUV. They pick you up. They t- they call you when you get to the um. Dude, the the best privilege that, that you got out of concierge was. When you're boarding, you know, when it gets like a shit show and everyone's around there, yeah. there's a rep up at the front of the gate. We're just waiting for you. So you walk around. You don't even like go where everyone is. You in go line. behind the counter. You go behind the counter and you go, hi, I'm Mr. Chrysler. And they're like, Mr. Chrysler, come on. And then they walk you onto the plane. It was a fucking best, dude. And then I got in trouble. This lady called me at my house and she said, Bert, this is Martha from Concierge Key at American Airlines. And I was like, hey, Martha. She said, listen, we are extending your service. Um, for concierge, uh, but uh, I need to let you know because they took it away. And I, she goes, I need to let you know why we took it away. And I said, Okay. And she goes, Please do not mention us on uh, your comedy skits or whatever you're doing. And I said, What? And she goes, You mentioned us on a very popular podcast. And we do not want anyone talking about concierge key. We don't want anyone knowing about concierge key. This is a secret uh, privilege. That we wow. give out to people. And so I'm like, I'm definitely not going back now after this. <laughs> that, that seems yeah. to have changed because they always start the boarding process with concierge, concierge key, key yeah, board it changed, now. It changed now. Any concierge key? Cause now people are like, what the fuck's concierge key? The best is when you meet fellow concierge key guys. There's a secret handshake. And you trade stories. Because they, they always go, concierge key, please board first. So you get down. And you, we never see each other. It's like Great White Sharks, right? Sit down. <laughs> the best, the best concierge key story ever I heard. Ever, ever, ever. This is a long time ago. Guy says, um, we're at the bar, and he says, sees concierge on my ticket, and he goes, concierge key, huh? I said, yeah, and he goes, what's the biggest thing they ever did for you? I go, oh, man, they, they really take care of me. He goes, top this. He goes, I had a flight out of Chicago, and I was going to a business meeting in, like, fucking Omaha, and they were, and the weather was bad. And they were canceling flights because the other 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 planes couldn't fly in. I said, really? And he goes, yeah, they got me a private jet. Holy what? shit, What? He goes, they got me a private jet and flew me to my fucking meeting. And I went, oh, my God, I never got that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So you were on a flight today. Today, yeah. And uh, that's coming back from doing shows. Yeah, I was in, uh, I have no exactly. idea. Man, it has gotten to such a blur. I was in Louisville, was last night, and then we drove to uh, Nashville this morning and flew home from Nashville. Man, let me say this, because I know uh, that I was so fucking blown away when I saw you at the store. This was right after I knew you had taped your last special, which was uh, Secret Time. Secret Time, yeah. Secret Time. And uh, I knew you had just taped that. So I'm thinking, oh, now I'm seeing Bert at the store. This is going to be like, he's working on new shit. It's going to oh, yeah. be like, get ready, Bert's going to kind of suck right now. <laughs> and dude, you you had also just done the marathon. Oh, and you, yeah. You came out with this brand new material about running the marathon. You had this fucking bit about buying uh, guns. Dude, that, let me tell you something. That new, this hour, I just taped that hour for Netflix that you saw. I just taped that. That comes out March 17th. It's called Hey Big Boy on Netflix. That hour showed up to me. That hour showed up within like one week. Just randomly Dude. one week. One week my daughter got her period. Uh, I bought a gun and I had this most amazing interaction at Starbucks on the same day my daughter got her period. And it was like, it was. Uh, I'll tell you the exact date. It was uh, April 13th. And I, and I remember that because my daughter, the joke about period parties, my daughter got her period on Friday the 13th. And April, <laughs> and so... I literally got that hour, and I was like, I remember I was sitting at that corner of Starbucks going, wait, did I just get all my material for the next special? <laughs> it was like, oh my God, I'm already done. Dude, ah. and this new hour, I have a new hour that I'm touring now. and uh, That's the, the Birdie Boy Tour. Birdie Boy Tour. I love that people are calling me Birdie Boy, by the way. People and, and like when they see me on the road, they're like, Birdie Boy, because that's what my daughters call me. They call me uh-huh. Birdie Boy. I, they call me Big Boy and Birdie Boy. My sisters call me Birdie Boy, my daughters call me Big Boy. And so... I love it. But this new hour, I'm in love with more than the last one. And it's just like, they just show up. They just show up. Sometimes, like, sometimes they don't. And sometimes they just show up all in, like, a big clump. And then you're like, well, fuck, I'm already done. Now now I got to, like, fine tune it and tighten it. Right. But thank you. Is I should have said just said thank you, dude. <laughs> no, I mean, it, I I mean it, man. I was fucking stoked, and and I knew that 
I mean, right, like you said, I was like, dude, he just taped a special. He has all this new shit. Like, his new special is going to be even doper. I'm going to do this. Now. I mean, I could I could speak at no say, Safe to say that this will have come out, like, just after your uh, your, your new special. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And I'm, what's, I'm it, what's it called? Is it's it called, called Body Shots? No, no, the new special is called uh, Hey Big Boy. Because oh, hey, throughout there's a running line where my daughters say to me, like, hey, big boy. Right. Like, like they've said that my whole life, that's how they talk to me. Uh-huh. Um, or their whole life. I'm, I'm really obsessed with this new special because I'm very proud of it. Because Bill Burr said something one time to me in passing. Bill is a close friend of mine, but someone I I hold very high of regards. Because he's such a genius. Who doesn't? He said, if you're not trying something new, then you're not doing anything at all. So he said, if you're not challenging yourself on these specials, going special to special, trying something new that you're not doing anything at all. I watched a couple guys that I really respect. I won't say names, but guys I really respect do stand up. Love their spe- first special. Their second special seemed like a almost like color by numbers exact copy of that first special. Same type of joke, same mm-hmm. style of joke, same topic, same premises. And it seemed like they weren't challenging themselves. Listen, I will always be able to write jokes and stories about my daughters, my wife, sex, drinking, all that shit. For me, the challenge was, how do I get out of my comfort zone and do something that is not typically me? Ex- perfect example, the gun bit. Like, I was like, I don't talk about firearms normally. I, I don't talk about anything political because I don't like to isolate people. I like everyone to laugh. And so I took an approach to that joke where I straddle the fence on both sides and have fun at both expenses. And I was like, oh, cool, man. Like, I remember Sam Tripoli was like, dude, I love that you have a gun bit that does not tell anyone what to think right but it allows them to make a call out of it and go this guy's definitely should have known a gun <laughs> right. it's so funny because i i heard you do that bit and i was like fuck man i think i might have texted you too that like I, I was i was like jealous and you know I, I i was thinking about about some kind of a bit for me where i go and like buy in some kind of assault rifle yeah. because straight up no matter what if somebody sells me an assault rifle that's a problem you know right and 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 you can even like color up the bit a little bit by saying some pretty freaky wild shit in there you know like um and then i thought like <laughs> in conjunction with this other kind of a long term bit cuz dude the bar's gotten so fucking high for me now that i've married my stunts and my stand up into one yeah. you know like now i'm 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 going out to do all new stunts for my new hour make an act out of it's it it's brilliant man it's and, brilliant it really is brilliant well thank you but uh and and it's got to be kind of tied into where i'm at in life which is like you know in my 40s approaching my 50s and so i got to go to the colonoscopy guy and i'm gonna be yeah. like the first guy that asked the colonoscopy doctor like so how much do you think i could fit in my butt you know like <laughs> yeah. i was talking about trying to shove an oscar up there but really like <laughs> if i have a goal for it to really train and stretch you know yeah. link up with some dudes in, in in gay porn and get tips you know i'm determined to do this and i figure it can't be as bad as my degenerative disc disease which i found out about a couple weeks ago i mean hell my whole body is a disaster from me beating it up over the years. And that's probably why it's not a surprise that I found myself waking up feeling like a bag of dog poop. But fortunately, the people from Helix reached out to me and they said, we think we can help you. They had this little short quiz that you take, which determines what is the perfect mattress for you and your partner. And I took the quiz. They sent me this mattress. It showed up. I honestly couldn't believe that there was actually a king size mattress in that box. But boy, was there. We lugged it down into my room and we opened it up. And just, Kabah! It was fascinating. And I'll tell you right Right away, I knew that I felt I was more comfortable. Right away, I felt I got better sleep. And right away, and ever since, I've woken up feeling way better in the morning. So, thank you, Helix Sleep. And plus, don't take this from me. They, they got the number one pick for mattresses in both 2019 and 2020 by both GQ Magazine and Wired Magazine. And why am I telling you all of this? What's in it for you? Well, if you go to helixsleep.com slash stevo, you will get up to $200 off any mattress 
and they will include two free pillows. Again, that is up to $200 off of any of their mattresses and two free pillows if you go to helixsleep.com slash Stevo. And you're going to thank me. I know it. But let's get back into this crazy idea I'm giving away. Become a gaper. <laughs> yeah, become a gaper. <laughs> and, uh, and if I have like a, a dream, a wish... <laughs> it would be to film the buying the assault rifle, you know, whatever you think about it. I don't even want to be involved either. I would just like to see less people get shot. Maybe it would be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so to that end, take one assault rifle off the streets by melting it down into like <laughs> something that I can actually fit up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Melting an assault rifle and fu- getting it up your ass is right. fucking brilliant. Right, and I don't know what shape is uh, is going to be. No, 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 but it's got to be the whatever shape is going to fit like the most volume in my ass. It's not about like art. It's about fucking logistics. It's yeah. about fucking how do I get in? And I mean, you figure the wood's going to burn. There's some wood I think involved. Yeah, but all of the metal. I want all the metal and I, I want it all. I, I'm by the way, I'm ready to watch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh man. Okay, so let me tell you that this is I'm, I'm brand new at podcasting. Yeah. This I got this van for this purpose. I had a van before this, which was just got kind of practiced with. Mm-hmm. And dude, I think I've become like really pretty top notch at being a guest on podcasts. You're an amazing guest on a podcast. Well, thank you. I'm a better guest than I am host. Me too, man. I'm so much. My initial idea for my podcast was to have people come and interview me. Uh-huh. So I was going to be the guest all the time. Right. And I was like, and that way I could do it with anyone. And so the first one I did was in Mexico with my bartender. And I said, you want to be the first guest host on my podcast? And he was like, sure. <laughs> the podcast often sounded a lot like this. So who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, when was that? This was... <laughs> Probably 2010. So you started right when Joe started. Joe no, Rogan. Joe. Joe started. Uh, Joe's been. I don't know how long Joe's been. I going. think Joe Rogan's podcast started in 2010. Did it? Was it did. a 10 year anniversary? Just had a 10 year anniversary. Yeah. Um, I was after Joe. Joe was very. I, I. I cannot sing enough praise to Joe as a friend and as a as like a just a just a cool dude. He was the first one who was like, dude, you need a podcast. You need a fucking podcast now. Even if it's just you drinking by yourself and talking into a microphone, you need a fucking podcast. I bought the equipment, set it up in my house, and then I got to give all, all the credit to Tom Segura. Came over to my house one Sunday. It was Easter. Went back, and he hit record. Joey Diaz was there. My dad was there. He hit record, and he goes, this is your first podcast. Don't edit it. Don't think oh about it. Oh, my God. That's just, exactly where I'm at. Yeah. It's so fucking hard. Dude, I had so many bad fucking podcasts in oh the beginning God. where I would bring someone on and I'd be like, what do I talk to them about? <laughs> and I would just sit. There was one. I did a podcast one time with an MMA fighter and I thought he was someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Uh, Justin remember? Wren. I know him. But I to do research, I listened to a podcast <laughs> Of someone else. Oh my god! And I got in there and I was like, "So you're uh, you're like a high level jujitsu guy?" And he was like, "Nah." <laughs> and I was like, "I'm pretty sure you are." <laughs> He's like, I'm pretty sure I'm not. You're, tell- you're telling the guy, "Oh, don't be so humble." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be so humble. <laughs> and then at one point, he goes, "I think you're thinking of," and said the other guy's name. And as soon as he said that, I went, "Oh, oh my fuck. god, that's exactly what I'm thinking of." Right. I listened to this whole podcast of this other guy to prepare for this podcast, <laughs> and oh, dude, Have you copped to it? Oh, I don't know. Did you air it? <laughs> I, I, it. I, you aired it. it. I aired it. I aired it. Right. I ended up. I end up. What I do in a lot of even. In, like I did a podcast with Jason Biggs the other day. Oh, cool! And man. it was I was actually a great interviewer. Like I can be a good interviewer if I'm really interested in you. If I'm not interested in you, you can tell. Like you can definitely tell. I've had dudes, and then there was a period of time what I do is I just drink with them. I go if I'm not interested in them, I'll just drink in them. Drink with them, we'll get hammered, and that'll be the podcast. But then I would say some pretty aggressively horrific stuff, drunk. So right. I stopped doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a different problem, man, because, and, and this is just fucking plain embarrassing, man. I'm new at this, and, and uh, my my view of what it is has just totally, you know, like, been all over the place, but my first podcast I did in this van was with Tony Hawk. 
as we were recording it, in my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is just fucking going so great. Oh my God, everything I wanted to talk about, yeah. we got we got to, it's like naturally segued from one little thing, didn't seem like I was, you know, had a list of questions, and I just felt like it was so great. I was even texting people after, like, dude, if I ever do a podcast that, that went, that goes as well as what we just did with Tony Hawk, I'll be so happy. Yeah. And then, like, this guy, is the buddy of mine who I'm doing this podcast with, you know, he's just some, some guy who like sells ads for his friends and whatever like i'm doing it independent and that way i love that i love that by the way i love that i love that i love that that is number one my number one thing is be independent own all your own content do not sell it to one of these big companies and get 50 percent of the advertising find your guy self an ad guy and do your fucking podcast mm-hmm. that is brilliant Keep cool going. well thank you um he listens to the tony hawk podcast and i'm like what do you think i'm just like just tell me how awesome it was and he goes how about if we get together and uh, and 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 like like you know, let, you know go through it in person? I can give you some notes. And like we went through it there, and I'm like, fuck, dude! I was so excited to have Tony Hawk. There were all these things that I wanted to say about like skateboarding and like the, and it was just like, fuck, man. There were all these. He says right here. He says right here. The, my podcast boy. There's an opportunity where Tony Hawk could be telling the, like this great thing, and like. Oh, I do that. I do that aggressively. <laughs> I will have I will have that exact podcast with Justin Wren. Some guy wrote it. I actually blocked this guy because it bothered me so much because <laughs> he was right. He goes, so you're telling me you had Justin Wren in your man cave and you told him stories about you. And I went, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, dude, I didn't listen to hear stories about you. I want to hear stories about Justin Wren. He is fighting for pygmies in in Africa, building wells for them, and you didn't let him talk about it once. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, wait, you don't want to hear about when I got involved in the Russian mafia? <laughs> Dude, and, and it, I went from thinking that this was the greatest podcast that has ever been recorded to like, oh my God, like I... I, I You're cutting it down to 14 minutes. I mean, I don't know if, if that... I mean, I'm sure I'll just put it out, but like... Just I'm put just, it out, just put it out. Look, right. here, here's the other thing, and I believe this, and if you you're listening to this please allow this podcast to grow and and give constructive criticisms and be open to constructive criticisms right. my biggest criticism i ever get is i don't listen to people i do not listen I, a lot, a lot <laughs> well, of like, <laughs> like who the comments or the or i don't the, listen the to the person i'm talking to <laughs> like the person i'm talking to will be like telling me a story and in my brain i'm like mm, bert you got to tell them about the time that happened right. to you yeah and, and then i just charlie up them on every fucking story and you're like like bobby flay dude i did a bad one with bobby flay came into my house no air conditioning in my man cave He's in a suit. It's the middle of summer. <laughs> Dude, I've had I have a podcast with David Tell where you hear chickens laying eggs and he's like, Where are we in fucking Guatemala? Like <laughs> it is but the, I love the broken parts of a podcast. Uh-huh. Like the broken parts make it give it a thumbprint. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this today. I was because th- I, I know you guys are getting together and I don't know what you can say or what not say. I just Oh uh, yeah, I mean everyone. dude, Jackass Four was announced by Paramount Pictures yeah. as as Greenlit. Now, before I crawl into this bag of worms, let me tell you that I have never been more excited about a sponsor than I am about this one. It's Manscaped. And I am so excited because I've been saving all of my ball hair and bush and body hair. Like, I've got a bag of pubes that I've been accumulating for almost two years now. And, and this is important for two reasons. Number one, I think I'm sexier and younger looking with a nice clean body shave. Plus, I'm saving up the, the pubes for, for something really special, okay, which you don't have to worry about. But every time I harvest, and I've been documenting the process, I, I have cut my balls to where they are bleeding. And I'm even like wiping blood on my face. It's awful. And so, like, it's been driving me nuts. And then along comes Manscaped with grooming tools that I've, like, I'm so impressed. I just used it, okay? I tried to cut my balls. Wasn't happening. Not possible. I got this beautiful clean shave with no discomfort whatsoever, and you can too. Plus, if you go to manscaped.com and use the promo code Stevo, you will get 20% off your order and free shipping. That's 20% off plus free shipping if you use the promo code Stevo at manscaped.com. And I'm telling you, your balls are going to thank me. They're going to thank Manscaped, and so do I. So... 
Thank you, Manscaped. Yeah. Let's talk jackass. I was like, why? Why am I so emotionally invested in you guys? Like, that, that I was sitting there on the plane going, why do I care about Steve over Bam? Like, I really care about Bam. Like, and I, right. like I watch him on uh, social media, and it seems like he's in a really good place right now. I don't know. And right. you don't have to say anything, but... I think he, he, I mean, given where he's at, he's in a phenomenally good place yeah. right now. And, like, when Ryan Dunn passed, I, I, I felt like I lost a friend. Sure. And I go, it's because... You guys were almost like the first podcast. It was like you guys approached media the same way we approached podcasting. Jackass let you hang out with a bunch of guys, and they, and you felt like you were part of the hang. Like you got to, you uh-huh. were like the third dude in the back seat hanging out, or you mm-hmm. were the guy on set watching the camera. You felt like your eyes right. were the camera. That's what podcasting is. When it's done right, it's just someone sitting there feeling like they're in this car. So that's what I when I I was thinking. I was like. When you your attempt for a podcast should just allow someone to feel like they're sitting right here. Sure. I think it's when when technology gets to the place where you can put on uh, VR gla- goggles and you have a VR camera and people can go and then actually be in this van. That's right. gonna be fucking next level. When you okay. can go to Rogan, mm-hmm. when you can VR and sit in the third seat at Rogan and look around the room, finally look around and, and be like, there. "Holy shit!" And that is gonna be next fucking level. I don't know, VR like was supposed to be the biggest thing ever, and it really just wasn't. But I want to <laughs> say about like just the general like my view on podcasting is uh, it now I just want to be fucking doing it because the difference in what I thought the experience was with Tony Hawk to when we played it back was like fuck and like fuck, dude. I'm I'm embarrassed of the Tony Hawk podcast, but I know that by doing this, I'm gonna get better at it. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, now I, I I will have to say that now I'm a much better interviewer. Like I never, the the turn for me was with Adam Carolla. This was when I was still doing really bad interviews, and my wife was like, we were laying in bed. She goes, I go, I don't. What am I going to talk, talk to Adam Carolla about? Like I know everything about him. Like what am I going to talk to him about? And she goes, What do you want to know? And I was like, well, I don't know. Like what was it like? No, she goes like, What really? Like what do you want to know? And I went. How much money he has? <laughs> she was like, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah, I want to know like when I he mean, got fired." Like, like you don't even have to ask him that; he'll tell you that like yeah. right away. <laughs> and she goes, "I go, I want to know if, when he got fired if he was worried about money, like when he got fired from and started doing his podcast." And she's like, "Ask him that, dude. It's one of the best questions I've ever asked on a podcast." I go, "Hey, when you got fired from radio, were you like nervous about money?" He's like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Of course I was." And it was a great conversation, but it was those. That's what podcasting should be: is like. There's no boundaries. There's no fucking rules. Like anyone that comes in, Dane one time, his his people are like, do don't talk about his brother stealing all his money, and then we get in there, and then I'm like, hey, so what happened with that your brother thing? He just fucking <laughs> tells you everything. He tells you fucking everything. Yeah, because he's he's a regular dude. So fucked right. up. I wonder if it's happening to me. You just saw my money guy leaving my house. I always right. wonder if like who runs your money. Uh, I have a like a Jewish New York <laughs> business uh, business manager. But your your dad is like a businessman. My, my dad has actually just got remarried, really? and uh, he, I think he's seventy six. He's like just partying with this new new wife he has, and like and finally he's like, hey, you know what, dude? Like you're on your own, and I'm like, thank God, because I've been so codependent. Like dad yeah. and dad, but I still have all my babysitters. And my business manager, uh, the same one for over a decade, and uh, I share this business manager with Demi Lovato. I think I'm in like you're fine. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm pretty safe from anybody doing sketchy stuff. But yeah, dude, and and I, and I still I want to bring it back to the to what I was saying before because here's the thing with with my stand up. I've been doing stand up now like regularly, consistently touring for I'm I'm in my tenth year. I was about to say. I was about to say. <laughs> The, yeah. A lot of guys, a lot of guys picked it up and kind of bailed, but you didn't. Oh my god, I fucking went for it. I went for it, but for the first five years, even a little more, it was so difficult for me to watch footage of me doing stand up. Sometimes Ooh. I would record. Sometimes I would rec- would record my set, but then as I started to watch it, it would just make me so fucking uncomfortable. Ooh. I just couldn't do it, and so I avoided watching my stand up at all costs. And then what happened after I recorded my first special? 
Uh, then I put together my second hour, and and one night on stage, my head exploded. I thought, fuck, dude, all these stories that this stand-up, you know, I'm telling in this new hour, like, all this shit happened on camera. What if I edited the footage into the stand-up, it's like, brilliant. after the fact? It's and brilliant. then it, it's, like, multimedia, like, interstitial footage to, like, illustrate the actual stories I'm telling. And I got so excited about it. What I did was I started recording my sets, and then in the edit, in the, my own little edit bay at the house, I started actually cutting the footage into it, and it worked great. But what that did was it forced me, it, it physically fucking forced me to watch me doing stand-up. And mm -hmm. it was so uncomfortable, but the things that made me the most uncomfortable, I would flag them like, fuck, I hate it when I do that. Fuck, I hate it when I do that. And I would just simply address You gotta watch it. And I, I would address those things. Yeah, I, I, would, would, I would say, dude, a lot. I say, dude, a lot. I go, dude, like, I'll start it. Story, go, dude, dude. Like, I, <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I would say, fuck, a lot. I say, fuck, so much on stage. But when you watch it, you're like, god damn it, man. Yeah. Like, stop saying fucking dude. Right. Like, that's all I do. My, you got to watch it. Dude, you have to watch it. Like once I started doing that, like the the growth in in my stand up was like compared to the 5 years before it was exponential. I mean, yeah. it just got so much more just so much more comfortable and and, and whatever. So I just I, I want to apply that listen to, your own to, to the podcasts. Dude, I listen to my first year I listened to all my podcasts. And I would be like, God damn it, what are you doing? You're stepping all over this guy. This guy's got a great story. And then you're just jumping in and going, oh, let me tell you my story. And it's it, you got to listen to him. And, and also, I think it helps being a fan of podcasts. Like when you're a fan, mm -hmm. you can listen to other podcasts and go, oh, I would have done that. Like, uh, like I'll tell you, the, the best podcasts out there are Rogan and Marin. Rogan and Marin just are consistently fucking great interviews i mean i steal from both of them on my podcast consistently like uh just like well the guests are so entertaining yep yeah, no but but trust me when i say you could fuck that up yeah like put put ronda patrick on my podcast i can make that a boring interview who's ronda patrick she's, she's the nutritionist uh yeah. the, the girl who's all about like sauna lifestyle I do have a sauna in my house because of her. That, is it a dry oh, sauna? Yeah. yeah, dry sauna. Dude, I've been looking it up on Amazon. It's like uh, 1800 bucks. Is no, she no. super hot? Uh, she's I pretty. I don't even, I've just listened to her. She's uh, pretty, I think. She's yeah. pretty, for sure. She, I, I took the 23andMe and sent my info into her website, and then she calculates all your shit really? and tells you what you should eat based off your DNA. Okay, they, they did. I didn't know that could happen. Yeah, and she'll be like, oh, you, you, you probably don't like... Um, uh, celery. You're gonna be like, well, let me guess. You're a fan of Tito's and soda? <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're like based cheeseburgers, off cheeseburgers, pizza, wings. <laughs> yeah, but they're like based off where you live. Like somebody from like Norway is not going to benefit off of eating pineapple or bananas because it's just not from the region they're from. She's like, oh, you like reindeer? She's like, you're, it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you probably they're like you, you more than likely have a, a middle toe longer than the other toes. You're, and, they, and they'll go through like each quirk that you would have based off of like what you send into her, and I'm they're pretty very accurate. Interested in in getting a, like blood work analysis of like what like food allergies I might or might not have. I don't trust fucking twenty three and me for that shit. There's got to be a better to way to do it. I, do I, I sent in for a, a a food sensitivity test where you prick your finger and send it in to tell you what you are. Meanwhile, I shouldn't be talking shit about twenty three and me because it was one of the. The potential advertisers that my buddy brought up this morning at breakfast. Hey, they're great advertisers. <laughs> By the way, shout out to 23andMe. Use a promo code BERTCAST. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, they're a bots. They're a bots. They're a <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm ignorant as hell, so I don't Best know. Best 23andMe but, joke I've ever heard. Uh, God, I wish I remember this guy's name. He's out of... Uh, he, I think he owns the stand in New York. He's a really smart dude. He was like a br business guy that got into stand up. He goes, I got my 23 of me <laughs> results back. I am 98% uh, 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 Sephardic Jew, Jewish, and 2% Sub Saharan Africa. You know, that wasn't a date. <laughs> 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 Jesus, dude. Oh, <clears throat> I, I found out I'm four percent Jewish. Really? Yeah. See, that's what I don't care about. I don't care how much percentage Greek I am. Or like, you know, it doesn't. It doesn't. She handed it down the two. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh god. Uh, 
god. Oh my god. <laughs> why don't Why don't you care about that? Because that's I, so fucking fascinating to me. Like where where like, you're from? My, I mean, I get the sense that my fucking lineage is is European. Like there's a lot of England. There's like I just don't care. It doesn't change my fucking life or what I'm gonna like. You know, it doesn't. Do you it, care about knowing where you're from? Yeah. Uh, Do you know where you're from? You know what's so funny? I one time I was talking to this uh, Native American guy on stage, and I said, uh, "So, what's your I think background?" And he goes, "Native American." I said, "What kind?" He goes, "I don't know, like I think Cherokee or something." And I went, "Oh," I go, "You don't know?" And he was like, "No." I was like, "Well, you do. You should know that." And he goes, "What are you?" I said, "Irish, I think." And he goes, "So you're telling me (laughs) I should be more interested in myself because I'm Native American?" He goes, "You're not interested in yourself." And I was like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck I am either. I'm like, why would I? I, I assume if I was Native American, I'd be more fascinated with my lineage. Here's something that, like, huh. when, when the, the politically correct term for black people is African American, I got to imagine that that would drive anybody nuts to be like, like, why are you assuming that I came from Africa? Like, how uh, about Jamaica? Big, like, big fucking call. Do not. That is no, lesson number one I learned in stand up and learned it in Miami. Do not call a br- black person African American. They they fucking get livid, bro. Is it black? I no, thought no, you were it, gonna say. I thought you were gonna say lesson number one. Don't even go anywhere near any of this on a podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, this is great content. This is this is where they're in their office going louder in the ears. That um, no, because uh, people are Jamaican. People are from yeah. Haiti. People are from, people are Dominican. They're right. not African American. So right. by calling someone African American, and Miami's such a melting pot, by calling someone African American, you're assuming right. they're, they're of that lineage, and they're not. And so. Right. Right. I mean, the whole purpose of America was to not be from America, right? Yeah. It was based on immigrants. They call it a melting pot. Yeah, it's it's uh more of a TV dinner, really. Like <laughs> 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 put it in the notebook. Yeah, that yeah. was that was my observation because I went to all four years of high school in England. You know, I, when I when I got to the University of Miami at 18 years old, I forgot I, you were, you went to Miami. Yeah, I had I had not uh, I had not fucking lived in America from the age of nine. So when I got to America, I was like, "What the fuck, dude? Everybody like wants to fight? Like that's they, all physical jocks like trying yeah. to be intimidating? That wasn't part of my lifestyle. That wasn't something I was used to. And the the aggressive racism. I was like, fucking everybody's so racist. What oh, the yeah. fuck? Yeah. You know? They're racist in England, too. They, they throw bananas on the field when black guys play soccer. Really? Oh, Do they yeah, really? Yeah. I saw it on, yeah, on uh, real time. Not real time. Uh, real sports. Brian, Brian what do they say about that? They're like, oh, come <laughs> on. We're just, it's contest. <laughs> and you're like. <laughs> it's been going on for thousands, hundreds yeah. of years. Yeah, yeah, my, you, wait, That's weird. Um, I forgot you went to University of Miami. Yeah, and you went to FSU, Florida yeah, State yeah, yeah. University. So oh, you're... my God. The best joke. Uh um, at, at Florida State, what they like uh, when they're cheering in the stadium for yeah. their football team, the Seminoles, uh-huh. because it's the Florida State Seminoles, which are a Native American yeah. tribe. Like they've got this thing, the tomahawk chop that they do, yeah. and it's the same exact tomahawk chop that the Atlanta Braves fans do at the baseball stadium in Atlanta. The question is, what is the difference between the Atlanta Braves tomahawk chop? And the Florida State Seminoles tomahawk chop. I don't know. At Florida State, you get three credits for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a bunch of dipshits. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I, I liked it. I just canceled a date in Tallahassee. Oh, yeah? I was supposed to go to, back to Tallahassee and do a show, and I just canceled it. Why? Because it wasn't a big enough theater? No, no. I don't know. I just... So I, I have no interest in. So you are you taking a bus there? Sorry yeah, to cut you yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. I take bus a bus from everywhere. where? Are you John Madden now? No, I fly into a city and then I the bus meets me at the airport. And we'll do like four cities and then I fly home. Oh. Okay. It's the fucking greatest thing so I've you, ever done in my life. So you do Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, well, oh, sorry, yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four days. Yeah. Well, this week we're doing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. This week uh, we're in Boston. We're doing three shows. So does that mean you do a different uh, tour bus every time, or nope, the, same the tour, tour bus. bus meets you? Same tour bus, dude. This is the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. Oh my same god! Same tour bus. I have everything I want on the tour bus, right? I, the first day it comes to LA, and it 
Do we just lose the camera? One we, camera. We lost a camera, dude. That's <clears throat> okay. Ah. Uh, you want to do it real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah, just, just wait. We got another battery charging. Okay. Keep, keep talking. The, uh, um, so the first day, the bus comes out to L.A., and I pulls up to my house, and I loaded up all my shit. Put some weights in there. Put, like, a couple pre-roll joints. I got everything. <laughs> everything. Everything. Like, I'm not a big weed guy, but I can take, if I take a hit, then I stop drinking. And so, for me, I'll take, like, a hit and then pass out. Um, I put... I get all my food. I get my. I have certain like paintings I like to have on the bus. I get. I turn it into my home, uh-huh. and then it tours with me for, you know, four months, and it stays out on the road. So when I fly, I just have sweatpants, backpack, headsets, phone, wallet, and that's it. So I don't have to. I don't have to bring anything with on, oh on the road. Oh my god! That Everything's on the road. Cool. It's so great. All my blood pressure medicine. I got blood pressure medicine on the bus. I got it at home. It's like the greatest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I love it more than anything. You wake up. One of my favorite things in in the world. One of the things that I loved about Jackass was that it it felt like felt like you guys were at camp together. Like you guys felt like you guys were like vacationing together. And the greatest feeling in the world is when you're with a bunch of guys, and I just say guys, I mean, but you're friends, and you guys wake up in the morning, and you're hungover, and you're like, you're like, uh, hey, last night was, was crazy, huh? What happened to that chick that got pulled out of the bar by her back of her neck? And you're like, oh, shit, you saw that? That, congr- that congregating in the morning of, like, we get that on the tour bus every fucking morning, every fucking night. When you say we, how many people are on your tour bus? I'll bring as many as I can. I, tr- I normally have, I try to have three openers. Shane Torres, Jesus Trejo, and Dave Williamson. Dude, he's my opener now. Oh, for real? Scott Start opening, yeah. Oh, congratulations. Thank man. you. And, and, dude, the public speaking is his biggest fear in the world. When I, I check my, my my heart rate when I get up there, and the first, the first every time. So the first, three openers. How, how much does each guy do? Uh, we tr- I try to keep it at, like, 30 minutes, so 10 each, or or they do 15 each if it's two of them. or uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like them going much longer because I do an hour and a half. But, um... But yeah, and so and then we have my tour bus driver. I have a tour manager and a content uh, provider. So content, pro- like a content producer yeah, for like yeah. Instagram and all that. Yeah, and so are you are you uh, cranking out YouTube content? Eh, not much, not not too much. So what's the content? Uh, a lot I'm of it's talking. Instagram, like promo videos. Right, so okay. I'm, I sell a lot of tickets through Instagram, and so if I can just have a guy with me with a camera to catch stuff, then I can. I'm, I'm I just clip it out. Like, I, I told Bill Burr I could kick a 33-yard field goal. So we're at Pat McAfee's compound. Pat McAfee was yeah, a kicker for the, punt, for the Colts. And he we fucked around, and I put it up, threw it on Instagram, threw on some dates for New York at the end of it. Bam. So we, we do a three-minute clip, which goes to uh, Facebook, YouTube, and then we do a one-minute clip for Instagram. Dude, don't call that guy Pat McAfee. <laughs> it's McAfee. Yeah, it's McAfee. <laughs> Wait, did you meet him? Yeah, I was on his show, and uh, and you said that. Yeah, I, 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 I nothing went well on that fucking show. Oh, for real? I, I hadn't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I got along with him great. Yeah, he's great. But I, I talked about stuff I, that uh, you know, I mean, I'll just say it that I hadn't fucking done my Jackass Four deal yet, and he was t- he had heard the announcement from Paramount. He's just like talking about oh, Jackass shit. Four, and at a certain point, it became like. Uh, it felt like it didn't make sense to be pretending that like I had my deal done. So I just like blurted out, yo, I don't have my deal done yet. You know? And he was like, huh? And it was just like turned into like, you know, a fucking can of worms kind of. I can't imagine <laughs> how fucking, I can't imagine how sticky and complicated that would be. I mean, d- doing business with your buddies is fucked up no matter how you're approaching it. You know, Especially like, when you know the 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 thing you're going to make is going to make lots and lots of money. It's got to be it's got to be very difficult. I can only imagine. Do we lose another camera? No, we didn't. I don't know what that fucking beeping is. But... Oh, it might be. But um, yeah, I was thinking about that. I was like, I, I wouldn't even want to go into it, and I wouldn't even want to ask about it. That's why it, it, it bothers me. Like, we, I have a podcast with Bill Burr. I have a podcast with Segura. Holy shit, dude! I, I don't. I know about two men in one cave. Two bears, one cave is me and Scurry. Yeah, two bears, one cave. Me yeah. and me and me and Tom are have, or me and Bill have Bill Burt, the Bill Burt podcast. You guys uh-huh. smoke cigars. We smoke cigars. We'll have a. I have a cocktail. Bill doesn't drink anymore. Um, but yeah, it's it's, and and even doing business with your friends in that capacity, is un- I find it uncomfortable. Hmm. Sure. Like I like, I just said to my business manager, I was like, hey, are we getting paid? And he was like, 
well, yeah. And I was like, cool, never mind. Are we getting paid what? Like, like with the Tom thing, I was like, are we getting paid? <laughs> like, because Tom and I have been doing it for a while. Oh, right, right, and He was right, like, right. yeah. He was like, I deal with Tom. And I was like, okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't even bring it up. I, I do. I don't even bring it up. Like it just makes me so uncomfortable. Well, you sure. feel like you're stepping on his toes I or just, something. Just, like I'm not that guy. Like, hey, how much money am I making? You know, like I'm not that guy at all. I would do it for free. I would do the podcast for free. I love. I mean, I love Tom, like brother. But I giggle with that guy so hard, and those podcasts sell so many tickets for me on the road. I would do them for free. But if we're all making money, I would want to get paid as well. Right. But I, I that just makes me uncomfortable to the core to talk about money. Yeah. I was, yeah. And, and I mean, the, before everybody goes like, oh, well, what was so controversial about it? I was just kind of frustrated because I, in, in my view, I was like, man, like fucking, I, I've been so active for over the last 10 years, you know? Like, uh, I just felt, felt that, you know, that my, my story all along was, uh, you know, if we make another movie, great. If we don't make another movie, like I'm doing, I'm behaving exactly the same way. I'm going to be yeah. doing fucking nuts shit anyway. And so I just felt frustrated that Paramount, like, kind of just didn't seem to want to recognize that I've like stayed really active and kind of kept the flames alive, you know, and that that like I have a story where people are rooting for me. Let you me, know? Let, me let me tell you. And so I, I I'll just tell you said, what's wrong I, with with yeah. with. I, I don't know the people at Paramount. I apologize. And if I you're got listening. it. I got yeah. it done anyway. So it's a moot point. And I don't. I'm yeah. Thrilled. I'm fucking thrilled to be a part of I it. I don't know anyone at Paramount. And I don't know anyone at Fox. I don't know anyone at at CBS. But I will tell you, they they live in a bubble, and their bubble is starting to fall apart around them. Right. And they don't realize it, and they don't realize that guys like me and you are making millions of dollars on our own, and we're and we're not using the system. We, we have no attachment to the system. Right. Um, and that the, the system can't find us. That's why they're trying to take Rogan down. You know, see what CNN did? They kind of came out and said, I, I think they came out and said some shit about him. And the reason is he is the number one media outlet in the world right 100%. now. 100%. And, and they can't control him. He decides that he wants to vote for, for Bernie. Right, right. I saw, Bernie, I saw that. What you call it? And, he and suggested that he might. He, he did. It, it was not an endorsement. And, and what happens is lead. Elizabeth Warren's people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Fuck that. We got to take this guy down. I mean, I don't know that's what's happening, but that is what's happening in my books is you go into a meeting and I'll tell you right now, I go into a meeting at, at a place. I won't say names, but big networks and they come, they go, so we want to do a pilot. And I go, no. And they're like, wait, what? And I was like, I'll just do it on my own. And they're like, wait, what do you mean? I was like, I'll just make it my own and put it on YouTube and I'll sell tickets. I don't need you. Like, I have a larger platform I, than you guys anyway. I have a anyway. much larger platform. They have no more power. That's the yeah. problem. Dude, fucking, you know how many people have tried to buy Something's Burning, my cooking show? And I'm just like, no. I like wait, the way wait. I do it. I like yeah. the way I do it. And I don't want to sell it to anyone. If you want to do it the way I do it, then you can do that. By the way, my production budget is $2,000. So... How the fuck are you going to compete with that? I can foot that bill on my own, make the product I want, put it out for the fans the way I want to. I'm not going to go to you. Dude, I just did a show. I just did a show with Netflix, like a series. And um, and I was so blown away. Like, Because as you see this right here, next time you go in to do radio, you'll look around and you'll be like, God damn it, I feel like they're wasting a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Right. And when I did that Netflix show, the, the first thing I was saying was like, Oh my God, we're wasting so much money. And my head writer, Mike Gibbons, said, Hey, that, this isn't your money. You don't get to take it home. Don't worry about any of that. Like, just make the product they want to make. And you're like, Oh yeah, because I got into, I got into such a mindset of like, I can make this quicker, faster, and cheaper that I, it was, it was hindering me. And, and, but you realize like, when you, the budget for Jackass has got to be like fucking. 25 20, million, $25 probably. million. Dollars. And then they'll steal another million. 25 in P&A. Do you remember, but do you remember, you guys used to make Jackass for like 15 grand an episode. That's, I mean, like it's that, so yeah. fucking insane is that you could make that product on your own. But, I mean, but, but, but why not, right. why not everyone make millions and get the fuck out, you know? Right. But right. it's like, that's where I get, uh, that's where I, that's my hill to die on is like, I always want to make things cheaper and on my own. Sure. I just want to like do well, it. It's interesting too that when you say you're in the radio station and they're wasting all this money, but at the same time, according to our buddy Mike Calta in Florida, he's uh, the biggest radio DJ in the Tampa Bay area. He says that terrestrial radio is alive and well. Oh, it is. It is for him. 
It is for him. It is for Elliot in the morning. It is for Preston and Steve. It's for Todd and Tyler, for Bob and Tom. It is alive in some places. But he will admit it is dying a very fucking hospice-y death all over the fucking country. It, all it's doing is it's getting rid of the, the dead weight and it's allowing guys like him to really establish their platform. Right. Like his, you, you'll know the markets where you can go in, you do radio and you sell tickets. Sure. People still listen. They definitely still listen. But man, there's a lot of markets where they don't fucking listen at all. Go and try to do a fucking ro- show in San Francisco. No one's listening uh, to fucking Lamar radio. Lamar and Snelly. Oh, I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like those guys. Yeah, though. but I bet I've never met them. But I'm sure they're right. cool dudes. Are you still doing radio in the morning for for press or depends? Well, or when you're doing theaters, theaters, no, right? No, it depends. I'll do. I'll, it depends if I like know podcasts. The sell them out. Yeah, let's talk about touring, dude. Yeah. Do, do you have a, a Facebook guy who? This is one of the best things I've done. I don't. I don't have to promote my fucking tour dates on Instagram anymore. Yeah. Like because I've got this. This guy that we that we hired to do Facebook campaigns, which are specifically geo targeted, yeah. so that they only show up in the area where that show is. Yeah. He put some money behind it to uh, reach more people. And fuck, it's like like you know we, when we turn on these campaigns, we get the ticket counts, and it's like fuck. Dude. I used to do that. I used to do that when I was doing clubs. I did that. That would really back help. when I was. Doing yeah. That. No, I, I just now it's like <laughs> I, I I what I did what I've done now is I um. I, can't, I mean, I can talk about it, it's not, but but uh, I signed a different type of deal. Uh, I signed a deal with a promoter, and so like Live I, Nation or something. You know, yeah, like one of those, and uh, and so I have a marketing budget, and I just put money. I make my own content, and then geo targeting doesn't work as well for me. Um, what I do is I do one big video, like the dancing video or roller skating video, or I'll do one video, and that'll sell the t- the t- tickets. And oh my god! And then with and so you're exclusively in theaters, the, the and I'm pretty much exclusively in comedy clubs. And the gap between those two situations is so frustratingly big. It's, <laughs> you know, it's not it is, like it is. I went. I was in Louisville last night, and I said my first thing. I said, I said, where were you, motherfuckers, for fifteen fucking years? Mm. I couldn't sell a ticket in Louisville. One, t- I couldn't sell one fucking ticket in louisville my whole career my whole fucking career not one fucking ticket as a matter of fact i had the dregs of society at my shows that i would have to kick out of that fucking club and then last night 2800 people on a sunday night that, that was the capacity of the theater yeah, yeah and you're like how the fuck did that happen i'm looking at the people going how do you know who i am it's because of fucking netflix man it's netflix i think a lot Podcasting. of casting a lot of it's a lot of it is there was I, when I was younger that someone said I believe in the long tail theory. I said, "What's that?" And they're like, "Just the more shit you have, the more shit you'll knock over. Like a dog with a longer tail knocks over more mm. stuff than a guy with just like one thing, like a little sitcom. Yeah. It's like a little nub tail. But if you got a sitcom, a radio show, a movie, and and a special, then all of a sudden you're not going. I think it is my podcast. I have three podcasts. It's my cooking show. I think it's the fact that I I, I heavily market. Like I, I'm cognizant of se- of mentioning where I'll be, when I'll be there, and uh, and the Netflix special. The Netflix special yeah. is a fucking huge game changer. But there are people touring that don't have a Netflix special. Andrew Schultz, huge tour, no Netflix special. Theo Vaughn, huge tour, no right. Netflix special. Um, you know, Pot, Br- Brendan, Ka- Brendan Schaub. Brian Callen, huge tour, no Netflix special. Right. So a lot of it is, the, I mean, podcasting is, you know, when you're getting into half a million ears a week, you know, all you really need to sell is 70,000 tickets to have a successful theater tour. That's it. Right. So if you can get into 70,000 ears and get those people to come see you. And then, so it's now you rent the theater. No. Like, uh, or you're not renting it yourself, but but you pay the, yeah. the rental fees or whatever. So it's when you get into that second show you sell out the first one you add the second this. show I love this talk then, this is then it's like 100% to to profit for you how much of the door are you like so, it's just all your money on the second show so right? yeah so when you add a second show that's the fucking whew. so let's hypothetically say you do the Wilbur right Right, and so that's you, only 500 seats, right, in Boston? No, 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 1,100. Oh, oh, okay, shit. The oh, Wilbur's... no, that's right, I sold 500. <laughs> yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't open up the curtain for us. <laughs> so the Wilbur sells seats maybe 1,100. What are you talking about? It's 3,000. 
So uh, so first time you're going to go in, you're probably going to do $20 tickets, I'm guessing. Um, Your walkout may be ten grand. i am guessing That's what you get on that first show. When you add a second show, your walkout is now goes from that $10,000 show. To $30,000. You you get the lion's share. So you'll maybe go to $50,000 for two shows. So you get $40,000 for the next show. I'm I'm, I'm sure my math is off, by the way. But but it's that's the leap is like and dude we're getting there man like we're, we're I'm, like i'm building some fucking momentum dude and the scott and i do everything together well this this like, the jackass movie is going to yeah exponentially help especially and, I, and by the way I, I know you're not gonna try to tell some type of story or narrative about where you are from when they found you to where you are today is such a different human fucking being it is ridiculous yeah. and what you're doing on the road is acknowledged by legit professionals in this business like myself segura rogan everyone agrees you're not just here to buy a fucking lake house you're here because you love comedy oh like that's God. it's it's your thing you do stand up you do spots around city you go out and you on you're on tour you're in the clubs like the fact that like you, that it, it's not a passing phase and so when i think this jackass movie comes out i think it's gonna be really big for your touring like really big mm-hmm. well thanks man and uh i'm not even i've been just carrying on as though it wasn't gonna happen and i'm like dude gotta get so, so grateful to finally be doing this fucking podcast i'm just letting myself not be that fucking good at it and i think that already like this is uh by the way, this is. By the way, I'm. I, you keep saying you're not good at it. This is, the this best is a you've great. This is a great podcast right here. Okay, I'm listening. This is the best I'm, you've ever done. Yeah, this is. Yeah, <laughs> you're killing it, man. You're fucking killing it. Well, dude, I, I just fucking love you, man. Dude, I, I, I love you, so I, you much. know, I, you know, uh, man. It's you, you buy into people in life. I do at least. Ben Affleck. I bought. I bought into that dude a long time ago. I was like, he's my guy. Like, I, I'm, him and Matt Damon, they're my guys. I like them. I'm going to always like what they do. I'm going to always like them. For whatever fucking reason, that Good Will Hunting movie got me, and I was like, all right, they're my guys. Yeah. They're my new Harrison Fords and, and fucking I'm Tom like that Cruises. with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, Mar- I love Mark Wahlberg. I yeah. love Mark. Like Dirk Diggler. The shooter? Dirk Diggler. <laughs> there. Dirk Diggler, man. He's my guy. <laughs> Same thing with the fucking John C. Riley. Uh-huh. You fall in love with people. Will Ferrell. Kristen Wiig, where you go, anything you do, I'm in yeah. on you. I remember where I was when I first saw Jackass. Obviously, you know, I have a connection with Johnny Knoxville because we did some, I met him before Jackass. But when you fucking spit up that goddamn goldfish, I, I remember I remember where I was and I was like, I fucking love this guy, man. And, and there's, there are, there is a thing about your personality that everyone has a Stevo in their life. Like who you were when you're not younger, not who you are today. You're a very different man. You are, you have taken such I hope you take this as a compliment. You've taken such a shit show of a dude to such a fucking high place. We're like, it's and so impressive, man. Like, I, I honestly, you're one of the more impressive guys. When I look at who you are and where you are today and your work ethic and, like, how passionate you are about shit, from the guy that I met that spit up the goldfish, and, you know, and just, yeah. just seeing you, that is, like, from the guy that was so fucking taking ketamine like crazy and fucking destroying his bar apartment, the fact that you're here is fucking overwhelming. Well, thank you, I had a, I had a, I had a kid one time tell me this, and it's a really interesting statement for a drunk dude with no shirt and West Palm to make. It was New Year's Eve, and I was doing my meet and greet. I'm shirtless, and this guy's fucking wasted. And he's like, he's like, hey man, can I get like two minutes of your time? And I'm, you know, immediately in a meet and greet, you're like, oh god, god damn it. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the bouncer's like, hey, move it on. I go, no, give him, a, I give him a second. And I go, what's up, buddy? And he goes, all right, I'm a fan. Do you know what that means? I said, no. He goes, it means when you succeed, I succeed. I said, I don't follow. And he goes, hear me out. Hear me out. I don't got much going on in my life, man. But I picked you. (laughs) I picked you through all the podcasts. You're the guy that made me laugh the hardest, and you're my guy. I buy your merch. I come to your shows. And when you succeed, I feel like I succeeded because I made the right decision. He goes, who are you a fan of? And I went, like, I'm a a fan of of, uh, of Wilco. It's like my favorite band. And he goes, he goes, when they... When good things happen, don't you get excited for them? I go, yeah, I do. And he goes, that's what a fan is. And then he said that, and I started going through of all the people I'm fans of, and I was like, yeah, that's so fucking so crazy. Like, I like it. Like, really yeah, cool. like, like when you see, when you pick your people, and then they do something big, you're like, fuck yeah, Dude. that's my guy. Mm-hmm. And 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 
And what is sad is there are people that are too cool to be fans. And I get that. I, I won't use you because you're here. Bam Margera, right? Bam Margera and Ryan Dunn. Those guys, I am, I was legit a fan of Ryan Dunn's. Like, legit. Oh, 100%. The fucking, that guy, for whatever fucking reason, he embodied all the shit I liked. Like, all of it. There was this fucking time when they were up on a scissor thing on Viva La Bam, and they were stuck up there for, like, fucking four hours. And then someone came out and said, you guys had the keys up there. And they didn't realize they'd been up there for four hours. And I was crying laughing. That's when I fell in love with those dudes. Yeah. So when I watch Bam go through his tough times, I get bummed out for him. Oh, dude. I get bummed out for him. And I'm like, come on, buddy. We got we got this. Not you got this. We got this. And right. then when I see him like hanging out with his kid and being in a good place, skateboarding with his kid, or hitting a ramp, and you go, oh, he's, he must be in good shape because he's right. landing tricks, I get excited for him sure. his successes make me happy dude once you subscribe to that and you get that everything fucking makes sense mm. everything yeah, makes sense in this I business love it. i fucking love it and and i'll even take it a step further as it relates to bam like i well you're friends with him so right you, uh, right right and, and like i'm really close in the, with the bam situation and my experience was i didn't even meet him until we were filming the second season of jackass and and uh before like uh, before we were filming the second season of Jackass, like I got my hands on his CKY tape. This is after the first season had already aired. And I got my hands on his CKY2K video, which is one something he distributed all by himself, yeah. which was so fucking mind blowing to me because I was trying to get in people's videos. He was like, fuck that. He produced it, edited it, distributed it all by himself. And it was incredible. And I was so fucking jealous of this kid, dude. Like uh, my buddy was making a porno and as I'm watching this at my buddy's house, he's banging this chick on camera. I'm just like pounding on the door. Dude, we gotta go. Like, like I was so, I was like, we gotta, I gotta do something rad. I'm so jealous of Bam. You know, I just saw yeah. Bam jump out the sixth floor balcony into a pool and, and uh, we were on liquid acid that day and, and I went and threw myself off a bridge while walking on stilts. It was just my response to being jealous of Bam. You yeah. know, like it, it motivated me to want to be, oh. Oh, like yeah, more rad. to take and, that and go and to revert it and go, I'm going right. to take this energy right now I'm and I'm going to work harder. Yeah, I'm jealous of you and thank you for motivating me to get that fucking stilts off bridge bit, you know, and in a, in a, in a bigger sense, it's like he was younger than me. He was more successful than me. He was a better skateboarder than me, was way richer, more creative, better looking. You know, like yeah. across the board, bam, was, style, yeah. taste in music. The right. fucking kid had everything. For sure, for like sure. I remember, I remember just being like, "The fuck, what's yeah. that? He's got a fucking Lamborghini." Like, right. What the fuck? Right. He he like at, at when we were recording the fucking second season of Jackass, he had just been to the Audi dealership, wasn't sure which one he liked best, so he bought two at the same time, and I was flat fucking broke. <laughs> <laughs> I was so jealous of him, but. But like over the years, it was okay to be jealous of him. I was yeah. just a fucking fan of him. I was a fan of him. And yeah. then now, like to see him go through the times, the tough times that you know, whenever he's on t TMZ, it's been bad. You know, it's been <laughs> bad. And like I, I, I tell him that you know, I, I've told him straight up to his face, like, dude, like I was always so jealous of you, and I just, I, I deeply deeply want to be jealous of you again you know yeah. don't let me not be jealous of you you know like it's a really beautiful statement yeah that's yeah it's funny man it's funny <laughs> it's funny too because you're willing to allow when you're a fan of someone you're willing to allow them to fuck up because you want to see them succeed right. like when <laughs> how about the people just there i go just fucking how about the people that you're fans of and then you follow them on social media and they kind of reveal who the fuck they are and you're like, dude, the okay, so that you ready? You ready for this? So there's another theory I have, and this applies to cancel culture. It's a branding issue, okay? It's a branding issue. If you put yourself out as someone, and I buy into that, and then I find out you're not the person you sold me as, I'm out. I'm fucking out forever. I can't deal with that. I think that's a part of the reason I have a hard time quitting drinking is because everyone knows that I like to have a drink and I party and I feel like the second I, and I think a lot of my fans are people that, you know, a little overweight, have a beard, have a hotter wife than they deserve. They like to party. They get their lives, you know, they can get shit done, but they, they could do better. But like, I think that's, you know, not, not to speak 
out of school about anything, but that was what happened with Aziz when, because he came out as this like, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not trying to talk shit about Aziz. I know that he went through a lot with that shit. I'm, I'm not trying to I add mean, on. Andy, like, the, but as, like, as far as like the, you know, the, the, whatever the. the or Louis, even... Louis, let's do Louis. Louis is a better example. Okay. See, Louis, Louis told himself as this dirtbag, I'm a dirtbag, I'm a piece of shit, that's who I am. Everyone believed it, but they didn't really believe it. They were like, oh, he's a great guy, he's a great guy. And then when he's like, no, no, I jerked off in front of a couple chicks, everyone's like, what the fuck? And it's their, and their, their branding comes out different in their head, you know? Aziz was this woke bae, like, I'm a feminist, I'm a feminist. And then it turns out, you know, he likes to get fucking funky with chicks and put their fingers in their mouth and their pussy. Well, that did the branding dis disassociated his fans. That's when you lose fans is when your branding comes off wrong. But mm. you can't lose fans by being a fuck up. Dude, when when you were at your lowest, your fans were like, "Come on, Stevo. You can't go out like this." Sure. And, I mean, and, and people I, are saying that about Ben funny. right now. You can't go out like this, man. Right. I got when he's when he goes I remember this post so vividly. I think I texted you. When Bam was like, man, I'm in Brazil. I just got robbed. What are you going to do? You know, knives at my, I'm going to have a beer. A knife's at my throat. I was like, you don't need to tell me the story. Just have the beer, man. We get it. Right. He, he <laughs> that, be, that, beer, that beer was going to come whether or not he, this he, uh, robbery <laughs> happened or didn't happen. <laughs> you don't need, hey, man, I'm not your mom, okay? Right. Just right. fucking get drunk. Right, dude. I, I, I'm with <laughs> that. Um, he dude. already had the beer. Then he walked yeah. out to make the statement. And then yeah. he fucking went yeah, back. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's like, it's right, like the, right. with, with Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. <laughs> Affleck. <laughs> when you know when when you see him struggle, he, he came out of a Hollywood party and yeah, he was fucking I wasted. That. I go, I got you, brother. I got you, man. Sure. I'm, 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 don't worry. Your next movie, I'm, I'm gonna watch it. Like I'm, I'm still here for you. Right. You're my guy. Tumble all you need to. Right. Feel like lose the fucking dead weight that wasn't there for the fucking ride. Right. That's yeah. how I. That's... Yeah, I'm stuck on what you just said before about that's why I, I don't want to stop drinking because like I'm hearing you say that you identify that as like your identity. Well, I think like, I think a, like, I think a lot of people. It's like if you found out. I mean, look at fucking stopped. James Hetfield. James Hetfield was 100 percent beer in his hand every concert the whole time. Yeah. Cheers to the crowd. Like, was anybody fucking mad at him for stopping drinking? Yeah, you know? but no, but I think he was what was he like 50 something when he stopped. No, God, no, dude. They were he had like fucking, eighteen uh, years, right? Yeah. Now, really? granted, he just went back to rehab, but um, dude, fucking, it was. Uh, they made this, some kind of monster movie, and uh, it, that was like I want to say two thousand five or something. Yeah. So fifteen years ago, he did. He wasn't fifty years old. Yeah, fifteen yeah, yeah. years ago, yeah. and and I remember too that uh, I just got my little nine month chip, you know. Yeah. And. At the time, when I, after I got sober in two thousand eight, uh, and and uh, I went to a Metallica concert and they brought me backstage to meet James Hetfield. He was in his own like little space. Dude was just glowing, man. You could see sobriety like all over him. He, yeah. you know, he made it look so good. It glows on you, it, man. Well, thanks. It man. glows on you. Thank I, I, you. By the way, I look like garbage right now because oh, I drank dude. all morning this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but but just a quick story. I told him. I asked him how long had he been sober, and he said seven years. At that point, this was in uh, December of two thousand eight. So he got sober in two thousand one. And um, I said, "Dude, just got my nine month chip." And I pulled it out. It's this little plastic, like round, like poker chip kind of thing. Yeah. And you get plastic ones, and then and then when it's a year, it's a metal medallion. And I, I, I so I'm like my nine month chip. I said, "No more plastic for me. Straight heavy metal from here on out." <laughs> like, which was my way of saying that I, you know, I was gonna like be diligent and do the work yeah. of, of sobriety. But dude, I just like, I mean. Don't don't feel like you owe it to your fucking fans to keep drinking. Like I mean, dude, if it's yeah. time if it's time to stop, it's time to stop. It, it, it'll I'm be I, man. I'm 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 I I can feel that around the corner. I dude, just feel it, I feel like yeah. I feel like I'm. I look at myself and I go like, dude, don't be like everything you just said about about, about betraying brands. Yeah. Like, like I buy it, I buy yeah, it because yeah. it's like it's one thing if if you're fucking not genuine. It's one thing if you're if you fucking lie to people. If yeah. You, if you fucking. But if, if I choose fraud, to stop drinking and and, 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 and then I'm I'm cool with it. I think my, yeah, I think people would still right. come see me to stand up. I'm not worried about of that. Of course, of course. For they me, will. it's like it's like I I feel like I'm still so young in 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 everything, even though I'm old. But like. Like I go out to bars with the, my fans after the shows. I invite them all to a bar. 
how many of these people in the theaters are you like taking photos with? I remember you, I remember seeing you tweeting like, "Who's got a good way of meeting like a thousand people?" <laughs> yeah, I do. I do a raffle for the meet and greet, so everyone can buy. You can buy as many ch- tickets as you want, and uh, and we pull twenty names. They can bring as many people as they want. We do that meet and greet, and then. I, t- I name a bar in the city, and I go to that bar. And oh I my probably god! Take, what a nightmare! I probably take what a fucking nightmare! Oh, like no you idea. haven't already. No fucking. Idea. If you weren't drunk, it'd be you'd be like fuck. I get high this. before I yeah. I'll smoke a little weed, and then right. it just it's like there's a I, I just I'm like this. Uh-huh. And so um, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I maybe I maybe take we talked about it last night. I maybe take about five hundred pictures. Right. They're probably throughout a night. It's and what by the way, I don't mind that. What really bothers me is the person who gets four or five pictures with me. Like one more, man. I'm like, we already got it. Like, right. please. Okay, so 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 you feel like you need to hang on to drinking as an identity. But, I don't know but, about but, that, but but you, but, didn't, but, but, but you didn't have any problem with uh, like sober, sober October. October. I love sober and then, October. And then, and then you, you all of a sudden you started getting like fit. Yeah, know? yeah. You I love so I love weight. sober October, but sober October is a it's a it's you know it's a it's a game. It's like a fun. Everyone knows that the rules do it. No drugs, no alcohol, fitness. You know what's crazy is that when it comes up, yeah. I always think, ooh, harsh. And then I'm like, wait a second, I'm sober all year long. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I, uh, I love Sober October. I, every time I get done Sober October, I go, I might be done forever. How, 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 many, how long have you felt like quitting drinking is just around the corner? Because I remember when you came over to watch the special at Steve's. Yeah. You were saying like... I think it was like sober October. It was sober October, yeah. And, and you were like, uh, you know, I think uh, this might be it. Every every sober October, I go, this is it. And then, and then I I get drunk that first time, and I fucking hate it. Uh-huh. I hate it. Wake up the next morning, I go, why am I doing this to myself? And then, uh, and then it, I don't know. It just creeps back into your life, and you have a bottle of wine with your wife, and and the, and you know, someone brings out weed, and you're like, ah, I might as well take a hit, and you know. This last Sober October, I got mollied right before Sober October started. I was going to ask, how sick of talking about that are you? No, I just started talking about it on stage. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I just started so talking about it. Okay. I don't, I don't, no one ever really brings it up. Mm. Really? Yeah, isn't that crazy? God, that's like, uh, okay. So, I we talked about it on Rogan, and everyone just kind of was like, they and, knew and, I wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't super funny to me when it happened. Like, it wasn't like you'd expect... You know, a comedian to be like, dude, that was a fucking crazy no, story, right? No, no, I was no, fucking no, no, no. So Correction: upset. <laughs> nobody in the nobody in the fucking world would ever think that that was funny. For those people listening who don't know, Bert had a uh, comedian Ari Shafir over mm-hmm. at his house. They were recording a podcast. Bert's kids were fucking home. He had to go to the airport shortly, like sh- shortly after the podcast that very same day. And they were like, hey, let's you know, let, let's have a couple drinks together, mellow. And so Ari Shafir fucking doses Bert's drink with fucking Molly so now all of a sudden Bert's fucking like uh, having a, a, an intense hardcore drug experience in front of his fucking kids having to go to the airport to fucking get on an airplane fucking rolling on fucking Molly nobody thinks that's fucking cool the guy on the flight next to me got the best back massage ever <laughs> <laughs> no I just started talking about it because uh uh, Rogan was like, "Hey man, you can, you should you you can talk about that on stage." And I was I just was like, "Eh." Why? Right, the implication being that you thought that I didn't uh, know how to approach you're it. You're gonna harm. I don't. Their... I would, yeah, fuck, fuck with Ari, and people just start disliking him. And, and then on top, and then on top of that, his fucking thing with the Kobe comments, like, <laughs> fucking... and then. I mean, or, dude, just, already goes hard in the paint, I guess. <laughs> dude, you, you, you know, you know. I was thinking about that. We were driving over to do this with you, and I was yeah. thinking about that. Like, you know, where where do I stand on on, on all that? You know, like where like I. I, I don't want to like pile on and yeah. the whole cancel culture. Like let's like harm this guy and harm his reputation. I'm not I'm not out to to do that. I'm not the fucking police. But we're we're, we're the one thing out of all of that. Like I, I'm not gonna say oh the, it wasn't a joke. It wasn't funny. Like I mean that's just subjective. Yeah. What's not subjective for me and it's about that being on brand thing is him saying I was hacked. Oh that did he? But, no, I but he did, on. right? Did yeah, but no, but that was actually a joke. Oh. That was the joke was it was such a horrible statement that he wrote. Oh, oh hey guys, I was hacked. And and then you know, I I am definitely not going to sit here and defend Ari, but I I have in the past. Um I think what fucked him up was the video. If he had just left the tweet 
the video video is weird. It's like remember when Ray, you heard Ray Rice hit his wife, and you're like, right. you're like, oh, he's and they've dealt with it. It's gonna be fine. He'll be back next right. week. Then they show you saw the video of Ray mm-hmm. Rice hitting his wife. You're like, oh, that's a little different. Yeah, you're right. like motherfucker. Oh, he fucking hits he her. Hit her. Yeah. He. I've never been hit that hard in my fucking <laughs> life. <laughs> Uh-huh. And then, and so I think Ari's <laughs> video was was a video is so much worse than that in right. that case, and that and oddly right. enough, but um, and but okay, are but you the same thing about the I was hacked statement? Then you then you go and put all of your shit on private. You lock it the, down. Yeah, he locked it's it down. Same, same deal. It's uh, it, you know, there's I don't think there's any right way to deal with that. What happened to him? I don't. He was going right. to he. It, it's such a shit show. In, in in all respects of like I, I, I don't know what that kind of scrutiny is like to have that many people tweeting death threats and doxing right. me. Fuck. I don't know what how, what protocol is. Right. No one knows what protocol that is. So you're just making decisions flying by the seat of your pants, hoping they're right. And even the decisions that I offered him in that time where I was like, This is what I think you should do in retrospect were wrong. And and, and like I, I say well, I mean maybe he thinks so. And so I I know Tom and I talked about it, and we, you know, said what we said on our podcast, and he was very upset by that. He was I like, listened to the whole thing. Yeah. I had like, uh, what the fuck does he want? I don't know, man. I really like, I, you know, I think I thought you were pretty, pretty objective, pretty fair. Yeah, I th- like, both Tom uh, and I thought so too. But you know, also in that time when he's upset, he's also going through all this fear sure. of his life and 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 being assaulted, and so I'm sure he wasn't thinking clearly, you know, during that right. time either. Right. But. uh but yeah, and, and 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 then I didn't want to talk about the Molly stuff because it's right on the tails of this Kobe thing, and it's just like I felt like I was piling on, and Joe's right, like, right, right, "No right, man, right. you can D Molly, you, you're allowed to talk about that on stage." You so, know what bothered me was that that this the, when it was I think sober. I was right before sober October that yeah. he wanted, that he dosed you, and it's you and it's Segura and it's Ari Shafir, it's Rogan, all in the same fucking room, huh. and like the story comes out, I felt like. Uh, I mean, I, I was like pissed off for you in a way that just everyone was kind of like, maybe because he was in the room, maybe because. Well, I think like, I think it was, I mean, Joe and I talked after that, and he was like, "Hey, man, I don't think I, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm, I don't like speaking for Joe, and I don't like sharing private conversations, but I think I'm okay to say this." But he was like, "I don't think the weight of that hit me." when you right. told me on the podcast i don't think i i don't think i understood what right. how fucked up that was i wanted the and, weight to hit more in yeah, that scenario and but, I think, but i don't want to like i know but i think what happened was i had told segura on the phone and segura said well that's fucked up and the weight didn't hit him until that podcast when he was on that podcast he was like yeah man you told me on the phone and i, I didn't really understand it and he goes and i think that's what joe was going through is he heard it but he didn't understand it and then two days later he's like wait that mm-hmm. was really fucked up and so it was a really, really weird situation, and it's a weird situation when you live your life out on podcasts out in the open like that. Yeah. Where you're like, you're like, you you roll the dice. Am I gonna become a meme? You know, like, right. like what the fuck? Yeah, it was, it was, dude. The thing that sucked about it is, my, through, for all of sober October, my serotonin levels were off, and so I was like going through hardcore depression and anxiety all sober October. So I didn't even get to enjoy sobriety the way I had in the past. I never felt, I felt at unease. Because you were rolling so hard or something? Because, no, because, you know, I think when you do Molly, I think you, I, I don't know, but I'm assuming it borrows good energy and floods your head with that. And then the next couple of weeks, you got to rebuild that good energy. Mm-hmm. Like it takes from tomorrow. And so I had anxiety attacks throughout the entire month. Are you, are you an RE 100% now or is it like 92? No, we're, <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> he's, I mean. How's he doing? I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a little while. He's he's I know, not so good. I, don't think. I haven't talked to him since he mollied me. <laughs> I mean, I look. I told him. I said this definitely changes a lot of things. You're never allowed in my house again. My wife hates him to death. My wife, my kids, my kids fucking hate him. Like they don't. Yeah. And what sucks sucks is Isla loved him. Isla and him connected on so many things. They're both weirdo brains, and Isla loved him. And then she saw me texting him. Oh, what was it? My sister's house. She told me texting him, and she goes, "Oh, why would you text him?" And I went, "Oh, baby, I'm. It's complicated." She goes, "It's not complicated." <laughs> she goes, "Dad, he almost killed my dad." And I went, "Huh?" She goes, "How would you feel if I was texting someone who drugged me?" And I went, "Oh my god, I, I would not like it." And she went, "Right." Grab my phone, and I went, "Oh fuck." 
She's so I, and I told Ari, I told Ari what he did, and I go, "You just fucked everything up, man. Like you're never gonna be allowed in my house again." And that's what made me so upset. Is I go, and he just, he, you know, I, I mean, we've talked on the phone, we've talked a few couple times. I haven't really seen him. Um, you know, when the Kobe stuff went down, I texted him a couple times. I called him that Monday, you know, and and talked to him a little bit. But uh, but you know, it's 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 complicated. But you know, I I think the. I'm, if anything, I'm very capable of forgiving people. Maybe too capable. Right, good. He was scheduled to tape a new Netflix special, right? Did that just go away? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. It went away. Well, it was, it was, he was paying for it himself. I don't know if Netflix had bought it yet, but he was paying for it for himself. And I, th- not to speak too out of school once again, but I think it was just a liability issue of the people working on there were a little nervous because sure. there were death threats. But I mean, but it, was, it, it sounded like it sounded like the tickets were sold. People were still. I think he ended up doing the shows. The shows were awesome. You know, I don't think I don't think cancel culture. I think it only applies when you let it apply. I guess because I, I don't think anything's really changing for him. He didn't have any tour dates. He was done his tour. You know, he's doing shows in New York. No one's approaching him. No one's seems to be right. I mean, I, I don't think he's going to be hosting America's Got Talent anytime soon. But, <laughs> But he seems to be doing fine right, and, and good, it, kind of oblivious good. to the, you know, he yeah. stayed offline, so he was really oblivious to the backlash. Like he just stayed offline, mm. and I was like, uh-huh. I was like, I was like, wow, I checked it out a couple times. <laughs> right. Good call. Did you see the Godfrey video? I saw Godfrey. Oh God. Godfrey. <laughs> That's like not a guy you ever see like that. I'm uh, no, I've never <laughs> seen Godfrey like that. Godfrey was really upset. Uh, Brian Callen was really upset. And Michael Rappaport. Brian Michael Callen. Rappaport right. was yeah. beyond upset. <laughs> right. Callen was pretty measured about it. Like there's no Godfrey. Ka- Callen was measured. Callen was measured on the podcast. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I talked to him. I talked to him the day before. <laughs> it was. It was. It was a super tricky situation to be put in as his friend. Right. And, of and to be able because did Rogan ever acknowledge it publicly? No, all? no. But and I think that was the wisest thing anyone Probably. did is because it's really hard in that moment to say, "Hey, this guy is not the villain," because right. he did do something that everyone sees right. as hateful. But sure. you're going, "I know a different guy than that," right. and and it's it was it was just super complicated. And so even this, he'll watch this. He'll get upset with me about talking about because I won't. Frame I'm it the way he sure wants it. I'm sure upset with me, and, and I mean whatever. Like I, I felt the way I felt. I'm honest about what my feelings. Yeah, and he, were. I think, I think and he I should want, be able. He should be able more. to respect that. And I, and yeah. I, and, and I told him, I said, man, it's hard. It's a hard thing to talk about, and you're sure. and people are going to ask me to talk about it. I don't want to say, man. You know. I mean, dude, I don't want anybody to be like f- fucking vilified, ruined, like forever. Like you know, I, I'm not. I don't subscribe to that. Yeah. And uh, so there, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. but uh. The Molly Jones but, coming but, out but I'm good. allowed at Bird's house. <laughs> <laughs> My wife I happen hates to be him there right now. so <laughs> fucking much. You have no idea. Yeah. I mean, oh, I went right when it happened. I, I went back. I took my wife. I walked Ari out. I took my wife into the bathroom with my cousin Andrew. And I said, I'm going to tell you something. And I need you not to have emotion about it. She was like, that's not fair. I go, mm, 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 No. Like I'm going to say something, lips. and you need to just shut it down. And she, she said, okay. I said, Ari, slip me Molly. This woman, I haven't seen her mad like that ever. And But what really sucked is no one took care of me in that moment. Like, I was like, I'm the one that's fucking scared. And she was so, she went, okay, what do you need from me? I said, <laughs> I need to get out of the house. I need, I'm going, not going to say goodbye to the girls. I need to get the fuck out of here, and I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to wait for my flight there, and I'm going to go drink. She went, okay. I said, I need you to get me packed. And she was like, deal. Packed me, got me in a car service, gave me a kiss. And by packed, it means like a toothbrush and... A, a, a backpack and blood pressure medicine. <laughs> 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 I went to the store, and the first person I saw was David Spade. Oh, wow. And David Spade's like, how you doing? I said, I've been mollied. And he was like, huh? <laughs> and then Ari walked in the same room, and he was like, I something Molly. Stop being a bitch about it. And I'm like... It was so fucked. It was such a fucked up night. Everything about it. Like, I'm on the plane just blowing up. Going, like, walking up and down the aisle like, oh, hey, shit. anyone want a party? You know? It was just, it was, it was insane. It was fucking. 
so crazy because I've been sober since before they started calling it Molly. Uh, <laughs> I think. Yeah, right? back it was when it was ecstasy. ecstasy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck named I don't know it what Molly? Molly is like uh, I guess Molly is the pure the ecstasy we used to get was just basically just amphetamines and I think right. that's bas- basically but Molly, uh, man, the new Molly's not that bad. <laughs> At what I'm point did it start feeling good? Immediately. Immediately. I mean, yeah. Well, the, well, panic set in when he when he said to me, he goes, uh, "I said, are you on something?" Because he was acting weird. He goes, "I don't know. Are you on something?" And I went, "No." And he goes, "Are you sure?" And I went, "Yeah, I'm sure, Ari." And he goes, "Okay, I'm going to tell you something, and you cannot be mad about it." And I went, "All right." And he goes, "You're on Molly." And I went, "What?" And he goes, "I slept you Molly. I you slept you Molly. So it's already happened." And I go. Did you talk to my cardiologist about this? And he was like, "Excuse me." I said, "I'm on blood pressure medicine already. This, I mean, this might kill me." And he went, "I didn't think about that." <laughs> and I go, "I go, well, hold on. I gotta get on a plane tonight." And he was like, "Well, I didn't realize that either." He was like, "Okay, well, my kids are here. I didn't think that. I didn't think any of this through, but it's already happened." And I was fucking. I I initially had a panic attack. So I was like, I was like, "Oh my god, I am feeling this. Like this is what I've been feeling." And I thought I was just having like little flighty anxieties. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm on Molly. And then I started freaking out. My cousin Andrew randomly walked up. I love my cousin Andrew. Sat next to me. And I started rubbing his back. And I felt a lot better. <laughs> and then Joey Diaz came over. And once Joey Diaz got there, I was like, I was like, God damn it, he's so beautiful. Like the sun was backlit. And I could see the, the leaves. And I saw Ari's eyes are really pretty. And I was like, holy shit. And I was like, this is fucking awesome. But I also in the moment was like, I was well aware of the repercussions of this. I was like, you are my friend, and now you have fucked up us being friends forever because my wife will not let you at my house. I will never be able to defend going on vacation with you again. And my wife will, there's certain things where my wife's like, why would you do that? My daughters are now going to hate you. The worst part is like a month later, my daughters come, we're all sitting at the table and we're talking about it. And my daughter Isla walks by, and my wife's like, hey, let's drop it. We've got ears in the room. And Isla goes, no, I know what happened. And we were like, what? Georgia and Isla came in. We have friends. She's like, yeah, well, kids at school talk about it. And I said, what? She goes, yeah, the kids at school know what told me what happened. I said, what did they tell you? And they go, what happened? That Ari uh, roofied you and raped you. I was like, whoa, he didn't <laughs> rape me. She was like, yeah, yeah, he raped you, right? I was like, no, he didn't rape me. And then, and then my other daughter's like, no, sometimes, Dad, when you've been roofied, you don't know you've been raped. I go, oh, no one fucking. And I'm like, you guys have been walking around thinking I got raped in my backyard? Like, what fucking, what cool kids that I got raped and they didn't even bring it up? And then I go, he didn't rape me. And they're like, why didn't he rape you? I was like, why would he rape me? And they're like, well, why would he drug you if he's not going to rape you? And I'm like, no one raped anyone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What, what grade are they in? I don't know. No, no. no. <laughs> like, oh my god. Tenth grade and eighth grade now, but I think they were. Yeah. Jesus. But it was it was just such a fucked up scenario. But then that's the weird part <laughs> is know. that you know you live this life out in the public like this. Sure. It's gonna come back. You know. It's like right. what the fuck. Well, let's what? go do some Molly. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know where you go from there, dude. I'd say we fucking. Let, let, that might be a perfect it. ending. <laughs> yeah. Wait, can I, I tell you the you best do, yeah. part? Can I tell you the best part of this joke? The sure. best part of the story. My wife's still fucking livid. Still fucking livid. And my daughters go, how much Molly did Ari give you? And I go, he gave me half Molly. And our friends were at the table. And my my daughter goes, why would someone give you half a Molly? And Leanne leans forward. In the, in the fr- I, by the way, I haven't laughed about this event yet. I, had not one, I haven't found any part of this funny. I haven't laughed about the entire incident yet. Leanne leans forward in a perfect teaching moment. She goes, he gave him half a molly because he's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and I cried laughing. And they're like, wait, what's that mean? I go, don't worry about it. Your mom just made me laugh. We're good. We're good. I'm going to get through this. <laughs> give him half a molly because he's Jewish. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, a, that's a perfect way to end. Yeah, that's good. Oh, my God. I love you. I love you, too, brother. Thank that you. That was fucking great. <laughs> Huge thanks to Burt Kreischer for that. And to everybody who is still on this ride with us, please shoot me a tweet and uh, let me know that you actually like 
stuck with it that whole time. And if you have any notes, any ideas how I can improve, I really am serious about wanting this to get better and better. And your feedback is going to be very, very welcome. Um, that was the last one we taped before the shutdown. And I don't even know where or how we're moving forward from here. But we're going to. I know it. It's going to be a wild ride. So thank you for fucking being here, man. Yeah, dude. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs>